95 is burnt. 95 is burnt. 95 is burnt. 95 is burnt. Looking after marine resources and developing fishing industries are just the kind of jobs the European Union should be good at. And after all, controlling catches like these to ensure sustainable stocks requires the sort of enlightened policy making and cross-border cooperation for which the EU was designed. But that's not how it looks from the early morning market in Peterhead, the UK's biggest fishing port on Scotland's northeast coast. European markets are vital for fishermen and traders here, but many see the EU itself as a dirty word. They're angry at what they consider arbitrary catch limits and overly intrusive regulation. The EU has been devastating to the Scottish fishing industry. We've had very wasteful management, poor management, sluggish management, misunderstanding uh, about the industry. Uh, we've had communities ruined by the poor management of the European industry. Many in Scotland point to a lack of flexibility within the EU, which they say has been slow to respond to recovering fish stocks. And quotas and rules are decided in far away negotiations, sometimes led by nations with no fishing industries of their own. Every year, this industry cannot plan for the future by virtue of the fact that we've got the annual horse fair in Brussels every year when you've got to sit and negotiate back and forth. I mean, Austria, landlocked country, what the hell do they know about fish? And it's not just fishermen who are unhappy. Conservationists also criticise the EU's common fisheries policy, saying ill-conceived catch limits threaten stock sustainability and encourage the wasteful discarding of huge amounts of fish every year. But things may be about to change. In a vote hailed by conservationists, the European Parliament on February 6th voted by more than 3 to 1 to reform the fisheries policy, banning discarding, introducing longer-term resource planning and allowing regional control of fisheries. The biggest issue, and I know in Scotland, is a move away from the centralised Brussels management. I mean, I think one of the big things that irks any fisherman is that uh, a man in, who's never been to sea, let alone been to sea in Scotland, is making rules on what net and gear can be used. So if we can impl implement a proper regionalised management structure, and also the policy moving uh, fisheries to stocks to sustainable levels, then it can only, I mean, it's such a low baseline level of trust between the fishing industry and Brussels at the moment, that a Im new, newly implemented policy can only enhance that, that working relationship. The troubles of the Scottish fishing industry and how to manage its relations with European counterparts ties into wider debate among Scots and politicians here in the Parliament in Edinburgh about the future of the nation. Next year there'll be a referendum on whether to declare independence from the UK and in 2016 possibly another vote on whether the UK should stay in the EU. Opinion is divided. Some say that leaving the EU would allow more effective management of marine resources, but others fear it would put at risk vital access to markets in Spain, Italy and France. At the same time, many fret that Scottish independence would weaken the local industry's ability to influence the EU and make it harder to sell south of the English border. The Scottish Government says independence would give it a stronger say in EU policy setting and that in the meantime reform is needed to end damaging micromanagement by Brussels. But Charles Bruce, a young trawler skipper, actually blames the Scottish government for overzealous enforcement of EU rules, which he says puts local fishermen at a disadvantage to European counterparts. If things I don't I change at the moment, there there won't be an industry here. There's, we've we just built this boat a couple of years ago, but um, in another 10, 20 years time, we're going to see a lot of these guys just leaving the industry. Even they wouldn't take their sons to the jobs. So there's no one to push forward with it unless they see a future, and right now we can't see a future. With EU reform still facing big obstacles, and the outcome of the Scottish and UK referendums still in doubt, the direction of fisheries policy remains uncertain. But the message from Scotland's fishing industry is clear. Whoever ends up in charge must do better. The fishermen's livelihoods depend on it. Muir Dickey, Financial Times, Scotland.